People often come into my office and tell me that they are planning to have a simple, uncontested divorce. And then when I talk to them, I find out that it turns out they really haven't agreed on anything. They maybe had a meeting and one side talked and the other side listened, but they didn't commit to anything. And the only thing they truly agree on is that both of them want to get divorced. Now that doesn't really help much because we have no fault divorce in the state of Texas. So if one side wants to get divorced, they're gonna get divorced whether the other side wants to or not. The agreement that they both wanna get divorced doesn't get you very far. My name is Laura Hurd, and I'm an attorney who has practiced family law in San Antonio, Texas since 1987. And I can tell you that a truly uncontested divorce is pretty rare. So what does it take to actually have an uncontested divorce? Well, first of all, both sides need to have a pretty good understanding about what all of your assets and debts are and the, understand which ones are community property and which ones are separate property. You can't have an agreed divorce if one side is in the dark or if the other side is hiding things. Because if there's anything that's not specifically awarded to one party or the other in the final decree, then you could find yourself in court fighting over it years later. If it's undivided or undisclosed property that was not mentioned in the final decree, then it's up for grabs even after you thought that you were divorced. So first of all, if you have reached that um, knowledge and understand what you've got, then you have to agree on how to divide up all of the debts and all of the assets, including your retirement plans and your house. If you've done that, you still have a lot of other things to discuss. You need to talk about the kids if you have children and who's going to have primary custody, who's going to have visitation rights, what the visitation rights are gonna look like, and who has the right to decide things like where the kids go to school, um, medical treatment decisions, who has the right to uh, consent for them to get married, things like that. And you need to have um, also a discussion about child support. So if you've decided child support and visitation and who gets decision-making power over the kids, then you need to make sure that the other side is willing to sign a waiver of service. Because otherwise, we have to have a process server to serve that person. If they are cooperative enough to have a knowledge of all the property and debts and you've agreed on all of these things, and they're agreed that they're going to sign a waiver of service and they actually sign it, then we draw up the, the final decree of divorce. Oftentimes when people think they have an agreement and then they see the final decree of divorce, it kind of falls apart there. They don't like the way it's written. They get overwhelmed by how long it is, how detailed it is. But if they will actually sign the waiver of service and sign the final decree of divorce, then it is a truly uncontested divorce. And I only need one party to go to the courthouse or to appear in court and put on some brief testimony. And we can do that generally pretty close to the 61st day after we have filed the petition for divorce. So if you have a truly uncontested divorce, it goes much faster. And it, of course, it's less expensive because it takes less time. But just saying up front that it's uncontested doesn't make it less expensive if it all falls apart because then it's gonna take more time. If you think that you have an uncontested divorce and you wanna run it through and, and get my opinion on it, give me a call, let's sit down and talk.